Game Builder Studio. Let's start setting up the uh, main screen. We're going to have two screens, the uh, main screen and game screen. So I'm going to create, uh, I created uh, another level and I'm going to create the main screen on level zero. Now let me import the background layer or image and you'll see it puts the registration point at the center and it adds a collision shape to it. We're going to get rid of that collision shape by adding a basic spatial and deleting the old spatial. You got to have at least one spatial on an entity. So when I added the other one I can delete the old one and I'm going to set the renderer to the new spatial. Now leave that in the center and drag in the hero sprite sheet that has the hero image on it. Go to the properties panel and go to this the sprite sheet renderer. Now when you drag a sprite sheet in it automatically adds a sprite sheet renderer for you and a sprite sheet. This is the shared object that caches all of the individual frames from a sprite sheet. It allows you to spec specify the global frame center for all the frames in the sprite sheet. Um, as well as whether or not this sprite sheet should be this this uh, sprite sheet component should use the cache or uh, use individual settings uh, for just itself and uh, because this is a texture packer sprite sheet it already filled out all that for you the, the date the JSON data file as well as which uh, divider type it uses and this sprite sheet component is referenced on the sprite sheet render with this via this drop down right here so any of your sprite sheet components on this entity will show up in this list and you can cycle through the frames one by one using this slider right here just so you can see what's going on and, and there's also a drop down here for you to easily select which image you want if you know uh, which image you want to use by name now when you have a collision spatial on an entity only that area is allowed to be to be selectable so I'm going to get rid of the collision spatial and add a basic spatial for this hero image and we're going to get rid of the old one and I'm going to the spatial object and selecting the render I wanted to control all right I'm going to set the registration point of the renderer for this hero image by going to the render component. Set the registration point to zero, zero, and you'll notice the little black circle here is at the top left corner. If if you want to have different points of rotation, that's what you got to change. You have to change the uh, registration point. All right, I'm going to slide this over. And it's also important to label your objects, just so you know which ones you're dealing with. I'm going to name this background, and I'm going to lock it because I don't want to keep moving it. Now I want to animate the hero image right here from off the screen to on the screen. So I'm going to need to add some logic to this, uh, to this object. Well, let's take a step back for a second and let me explain uh, the coordinate system. Um, if you look at this, the screen as a, as a coordinate graph, um, normally the X axis is from left to right and the Y axis is from uh, bottom to top. In Flash, however, um, and in Game Builder Studio, the Y axis is flipped. So the top left corner is uh, the origin point or zero, zero. So if you want to move an object um, along the y-axis, you would increase the y value in order to push an object down screen and decrease the y value in the negative direction to move it up screen. We're just going to animate from left to right. So we're going to use the x-axis. So we're going to we're going to animate the x position. So let me add a uh, a rules component because a lot a logic in Game Builder Studio surrounds um, or is mainly um, implement it using a rules component. So I'll call it logic animation 
and I'm going to leave the conditions blank because I want it to just play automatically. And I'm going to add an interpolate property action. This is going to animate the uh, X position from one value to the other. Now I want the object to end up where it is currently, so I'm going to animate it uh, from off screen to its current position. And I'm going to use property references and expressions. I'm going to change, I could write in here, just uh, start writing my property reference, at symbol, and then the name of the component, but I'll just open it up and use the property browser. And this is where naming your entities is important so that you know which one you're, you're, uh, you're pointing, uh, which property you're pointing to. So I'm going to go to the basic spatial and I'm going to select the position because I want to animate the position object. You'll notice that you, there, there are, um, there's the X and Y property on the position object, but you don't want to change these values because these are just read only. You, you want to, um, you want to set a point object on this property. And I'll show you how you can do that with an expression. So I'm going to open the expression editor. And I'm going to use a helper method called set point. Now I need to set the initial um, the, inix, the initial position in the X, which I want it to start off screen in negative 300. And I want it to animate. I want the, the Y position to stay consistent. So I'm just going to reference the hungry hero entity, the position Y value directly. And you'll notice this is using a relative reference um, in an expression using self. And this is important. Um, using relative references will save you some headache if you ch you know change entity names later on. Um, so it's a best practice to try to use relative references both in property references and in expressions. Now I want to animate the character to its current position. So I'm just going to pass the initial position property and I'm going to double click on that in order to get it in the editor or in the input box and hit save. All right, uh, I'm going to set the delay to 1.3. Play count, I want it to only play once. If you wanted it to infinitely loop, you would put a negative one in this field. And I want to add some smoothing or some easing to the animation, so I'm going to use a sign ease in and out. And I'm going to name my action just so I know what it is. And save that. Now if I run this, you should see the animation uh, running. It did run, but we didn't get to it quick enough. So let's launch it one once again. And there you go. A nice smooth transition uh, animation from left to right. I also want to add an, a floating animation for the image to kind of oscillate up and down as if it's floating. So I don't want that animation to occur, however, until this animate from left to right has finished. So if you open the interpolate um, properties again, you'll see there is a trigger on complete um, section here. And I will add another interpolate action. And I'll open that and call it whatever. Just call it um, floating animation. And I want it to, once again, change the position property. And I want it to go from this entity's current position. So I'm just going to reference the position directly to float um, up the screen. So negative 80, let's say. And in order to change the values, I'm going to use this helper point once again. And I'm going to reference the current X positions because I want that to stay the same and I only want to animate so I'll just copy and paste I only want to animate the Y property minus about 80 pixels so I just wanted to float you know up and down and I will set this duration to 1.3 and I'm gonna have this 
continuously play. So I'm going to set negative 1. And I'm going to auto reverse. Set it to auto reverse so that it, it, it just plays uh, back and forth, back and forth. Now let's give this also some smoothing. I'm going to use sign ease in and out. Save this. And I'm going to save the original action. Now that is a nested action that I just created. Now let's give it a test run using the quick launch. And as you can see, we got a little floating animation there. Now I also want to animate the game title image pretty much the same way I did um, the hero object. So instead of starting from scratch, I'm just going to copy this object and I'm going to paste it. Now I could have done a clone, but I decided to just do a copy and paste. And it has the same sprite sheet, so I'm going to go to the sprite sheet renderer and change to the uh, welcome title image. And I'm going to animate this guy in. But the difference is I'm going to animate from right to left. Uh, still on the x-axis. So I'm going to go to the logic animation. And I want to change the expression of where it starts. I want it to start from screen right about 300 pixels off the screen. So I'm going to say plus 300. But I'm going to get the screen full screen width because I want it to start off screen right and I'm going to leave the Y position and I want it to animate into its current position where, wherever I start it here. I'm going to add a duration of 1.5. I want to offset this with a delay of 0.2 seconds because I don't want it to come in and animate um, at the same exact time as the hero. I'm going to have like delayed animations for the hero, the label, and um, the, the play and um, menu button. Set the play count to 1. Sign ease out. That's fine. And I'm going to open up the floating animation because I also want this to float. And let me just make sure that this is... Okay, I want it to... Okay, same exact animation. So I'm just going to save this. I'm actually going to rename this action animate from right to left now I could turn that floating animation down just a tad bit to maybe only about 40 or maybe 50 pixels in the Y. Now what you'll notice is the the image started on screen so I have because there's a delay I need to make sure that I started off screen initially so I'm gonna set create another rules component logic initial position And I'm going to do a change property to set the current position that I'm going to use an expression. I'm going to set a point object and I'm going to grab the game screen full screen width plus 300. And I'm going to set the Y to the current position of the entity. Position Y. And remember, it's key to use uh, relative references. I'm going to name my action. Now I want to quick launch that should start off screen then come in all right remember to rename the object 
just to keep things clean and uh, make sure that you know what what object is what. I'm going to select the Hungry Hero title and I'm going to copy and paste again. Not creating a clone but just pasting it and I'm going to change the sprite sheet render to the play button. And I want to animate this guy in as well. And the beauty of the way I'm doing it this way is that wherever I initially place the object is where it will end up on screen once the game is launched. So I'll just put it there and I'll change the animation. And I just want to change the delay because I want this to come in after the title screen comes in. And I want to change the floating the amount of pixels it floats in the Y to just about 20 pixels and everything else pretty much stays the same I want to rename go to the layers panel and rename this object as well call it play button And I can, I could even adjust the registration point if I wanted to have a center of rotation right in the center of the button. Now I want the I want the button to scale down when I press down, and I want it to go to the next level once I release. So I'm going to add another rules component. I'm going to call it logic touch down and I want to add a condition called mouse down and I can also add a touchdown since this is going to be on the iPad uh, mainly touchdown is used for multi-touch but because because the mouse down condition would also trigger um, on an on a touch device but you can add both and I want this to change the scale of the render and I'm going to use a point object since I don't need an expression or anything like that I just want to change it to point 8 scale down and I want to add another logic component or rules component and add some touch up logic when touch is released on the entity not anywhere but on the entity I want it to change the level and by default it'll change to the next level you want to make sure force unload is checked now I'm gonna add a sound effect to the button when you press it down as well as some background music so I'm just gonna to go to the touch down add an action called play sound and I want to find the button hit mp3 call it play hit sound and I'm gonna to go to the locked background layer and I'll add a background music component or mac background sound player and I'll just have it auto play the background welcome sound Make sure auto start is selected. You can test it out right there. 